Hello everyone! This video will educate you on how meshing works in Ark Survival Ascended. The developers have obviously taken steps to make it harder to mesh, but it is still present in the game. I wouldn't count on it ever being 100% fixed, since it existed in Ark Survival Evolved for the entire life cycle of the game. There were well-known holes in the map and mesh exploits that took months to patch, and the moderation of official servers was awful. Watching this video will help you make smart decisions to defend against this meta-defining exploit. So let's get right into it. There's two types of mesh in the game, the ground mesh and rocks. The ground mesh is what most of the ground of the game is located on, based on the name. And generally you can get under here and have access to the entire map if you find a literal hole in the map or use exploits. The first major meshing exploit of Ark Survival Ascended, which is extremely easy to do, is to stand on a cellar door and ride it into the mesh. If you are under the map and look up, you will be able to see the world of Ark from below. It's quite beautiful. Then, while you're under there, you might even find someone's base and decorate the bottom of their foundations with some C4. Luckily though, on the island in Ark Survival Ascended, it's not that simple. First of all, if you're under the ground mesh, it is actually a hard ceiling that you're not able to get out of, but that doesn't really matter, because even more importantly, if you're under the map and have the main map loaded in, after a few seconds, mesh protection kicks in, and you'll be teleported back on top of the map. This is true even if you're riding on a tame. The only way that you can stay under the island map is if the main map is not loaded in. You can get this to occur when you are on top or next to a cave system. The cave system will load in, and you can do whatever you want around there, as long as you don't go too low and reach the death barrier, which is just below the ocean floor. Also, if you stray too far and deload the cave and load back into the main map, it will reactivate mesh protection. This can be used to a mesh's advantage though. If you use a tech suit, you can find a place where the loading zone is close to an enemy's structures that are inside the cave. Then just deload the cave, shoot a rocket at their structures, and wait for it to hit them, and then before mesh protection sends you back into the map, simply fly back into the cave loading zone and repeat. I do not know if this works, if there are other people in the loading zone, like your tribe or their tribe, and I don't have anyone to test this out with on official servers. As of now, this is one of the biggest oversights to the mesh from what I can tell. Thankfully, when the cave deloads, all turrets inside and outside the mesh are not line of sight blocked by the cave walls either. Having turrets inside your cave base that are not blocked by structures will be a very important part of mesh defense. The only place you won't be able to accomplish this would be the bottoms of foundations and pillars that provide foundational support at the bottom of your cave base, which I'd say is pretty dang important to defend, so what I would do is go into the mesh myself and place turrets on the bottom of the cave, and this is very easy to do in Ark Survival Ascended since the turrets can stick to any surface. Now, I have heard stories of official server admins telling people to get rid of mesh turrets, and that would infuriate me. I don't know exactly where and why tribes place these turrets, but if they were just defensive turrets like these, then that's just complete bullshit. Admins need to understand that turrets like these are absolutely necessary when meshing is part of the meta. Defensive mesh turrets like these actually take away from the legit defense of a base and only have to be placed since admins and developers don't put enough effort into stopping meshers. Also, now in Ark Survival Ascended, mesh turrets don't shoot through the ground anymore, so they won't hit unknowing legit players on the surface, which is really good. I truly hope that no one gets admin wiped or told to move defensive mesh turrets in Ark Survival Ascended. Okay, so besides taking steps to defend your own base from meshers, I do hope the developers make loading zones of caves much, much bigger. Making the loading zone larger than rocket range seems to make sense so people can't shoot rockets into the caves. And luckily the cave walls are all rocks in Ark Survival Ascended and they cover the entire cave. Although if someone finds the right spot right now, they can tech jetpack boost from a deloaded spot. And then before the cave loads in, they can get inside the cave past the rocks. This is another reason why cave loading zone needs to be much bigger. They probably won't be able to make the loading zone on the top of caves larger though, since that would cause problems for bases on the surface above caves because there'd be no mesh protection active to protect them. Luckily, the top of cave bases is the easiest place to protect with smartly placed internal turrets. So let's talk about the other type of mesh, rocks. Rocks in Ark Survival Evolved were basically big paper balls that were just one-way walls. If you got into a rock in Ark Survival Evolved, 
you could shoot rockets or walk out the other side of it into someone's base. Easy as pie. In Ark Survival Ascended, they are a two-way wall now, so rockets can't be shot through it, and it's not easy to get out of either. To get out of the wall, you need a ton of speed using a tech jetpack or tech gauntlets boost, and then also using a smaller character model seems to help you slip through the rocks a little bit better. A lot of the times in Ark Survival Evolved, people would use chairs and other methods to jam themselves into rocks, and this seems pretty hard to do now because the rock walls are not paper anymore. They're kind of, they're kind of thick. If you try to jam yourself into a wall using a chair or getting off of a tame, such as a Diplocalus, you'll get stuck. I have found that at some point you are far enough into the wall that it will let you set down a foundation and a bed inside the rock, or if you're underwater, a vacuum compartment, and then you can open it and then go back in and put down a bed. An oversight like this will be detrimental to the game because it will make mesh bases on caves very popular. The cave walls are usually a huge mess of layers of rocks that are impossible to get through, but there are some spots where the separation from the cave and the mesh is just a single rock. These weak spots will be found and meshed into easily by the individuals who would like to do so. Sometimes though, there's just a blatant hole between the rocks. Here's one that I found in Carno Cave. Okay, so I'm gonna take this moment and apologize that this game looks terrible on my computer right now. I have to run it on the lowest settings, but I just bought a new GPU and a PSU so I can actually run the GPU and uh, hopefully I can install it myself. I'm gonna try that out today. Then here's a hole that only works from the outside in that I found in Hard Underwater Cave. Then there's at least two more holes on YouTube right now that were found by Seriously Dude, Ark, in the Ice Cave and Artifact of the Pack Cave. Holes like these are easy tickets for anyone to make a mesh base on top of or on the sides of caves. Also for a mesh base, some rocks are just so big that you can straight up fit a base inside of them. And then, unlike how turrets won't shoot through ground mesh, they will shoot through the rocks. This is a good and bad thing though, since one day you may get killed unknowingly flying by an aggressive iceberg. But on the bright side, now you'll know that someone has a mesh base inside of there. Alright, that's everything I've learned about meshing in this last week. I will say I don't really care if meshing is or isn't part of the meta in Ark Survival Ascended. My only care is that official server admins don't ban people because of their defensive mesh turrets, or tell them to remove them. If you have a broke jank game, don't take away the only counterplay to the rampant exploits that you won't fix. So thanks for watching. Subscribe so you don't miss out on other videos that I make with important information like this. Comment below especially if you have any questions, and leave a like if you learned something from this video. See ya.